Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. It is January 1864. My first time being in 1864 in a campaign in this game because we started with the 1863 campaign this time around. Here's the situation. Our national morale is pretty low at the moment. And that has, has me pretty concerned. And I'm wondering if the longer we go without being able to retake Richmond, the lower that's going to drop. We're going to need to do something to change that. Uh, I don't know if there's something we can do with policies, but if that drops below 25, it's over. So uh, obviously we're getting dangerously low in that department. That said, we've got really good military experience, uh, and you can see the casualties are fairly even. Of course, much of that happened before we even took over. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into this, and we've won a series of victories out west. Uh, both in the Vicksburg area and also in and around Nashville, but we have not been able to replicate that in the east. I'm feeling like maybe it's going to be time we think about sending some help east uh, to assist with that. But the main thing we need to do is we just need to get our armies in the east, our corps in the east, at a place where they can build up some readiness and overcome some of the just disastrous levels of uh, attrition that we're dealing with as you can see the high numbers of disabled in these forces uh, we can look at the army of northern virginia headquarters which is still up here in virginia and you can see 56,000 men 44,000 disabled we need that number to go down uh, i'm gonna try to get lee's headquarters moved back down here but it I'm having trouble with some of these. I don't know if it's just glitching out because of the number of up major updates we've had during this. But I just, for example, cannot get the Army of Tennessee headquarters to move no matter what I do. But we've got 100,000 men here. That's why I'm thinking maybe it's time to send somebody east to help out with the situation over there. I'm just not sure how we're going to effectively get them there. I'm thinking the First Corps specifically might be where I go with that. But I wouldn't mind winning one more victory here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the 1st Corps over toward Knoxville. There is an army in this area that has taken Knoxville and has built some supply depot. We're going to try to take all of that. If we can drive him out of Knoxville, then maybe we continue up uh, this way. We've got a railroad here up through Jonesboro. Uh, then we, maybe we can hit the 21st Corps uh, and then link up eventually with the rest of the Army of Northern Virginia. That's the plan. Of course, no plan survives contact with the enemy, so it's going to depend entirely on what he does in the meantime. And we'll see. So we spent a little bit of extra money to unlock a new available policy, and we're going to go with Diplomacy 3, which will boost our European relations, uh, give us availability of six-pounder Whitworth rifles. Uh, you know, I don't know that's going to be enough. We're, we're going to obviously want Diplomacy 4 as well, which is going to get those mini P1851s, which would be fantastic news. Um, we really need to try and find a way to get European support, which is more difficult since the Union passed emancipation. But eventually, I think we can do the same late in the war. I, I think we get an ability to do that. Uh, it's right. Well, there's Confederate States colored troops. King Cotton Four. It's down here, maybe. Emancipation Proclamation is available to us. That would give us a plus 25 to European relations. If we can hang on long enough, that might be what we need to do. It looks like the Union First Corps is headed toward us here, which is not necessarily great news because we are in no position uh, for that kind of readiness. Okay, it looks like Beauregard just got into that low readiness state, which allows them to reinforce. But until you get out of the red, you're only in a defensive stance and you can't reinforce anybody. So I've got this small force that I sent up to reoccupy Arkansas, uh, Little Rock. I think I want to build that up a little bit. Uh, we're going to look specifically at the District of Arkansas, which is one of the core of the Trans-Mississippi Department. Let's add an entire division of infantry. 
looks like 13 days, 13 days, 18 days, 20 days. So in about three weeks, we'll have an additional 9,000 men, which we're going to need because it looks like we got several corps working their way down toward Little Rock. In the meantime, I, I still feel like I just want to sit tight here because I think Grant's got a massive force in Jackson that I really don't want to go too crazy on. But you can see here that they're just kind of riding, riding roughshod through Alabama right now. 8,400 men there, uh, an additional 11,000 there. So I think we're going to have to go deal with them. Let's send Joe Wheeler toward this reserve corps. What do I have here? I, I'm only going to have 44,000 men to defend Nashville, which might end up being a problem if all of these forces come at him at once since I'm sending the first core away. So uh, we're going to send Forrest down there to help out with that, see if we can hit both of them, or use both of these cavalry corps to hit him and then turn on his other cavalry corps. In the meantime, I think... We're going to need to try and recruit to Hardy's Corps. Get some additional men there as well. So let's go to the Army of Tennessee. Hardy's already got a lot of divisions. It's almost going to be like operating an army here. But, all right, 10 days, 13 days, that's not too bad. Again, about two weeks to add another 10,000 men. Okay, so the first Corps... Seems isolated right now with 20,000 men. I'm going to send Beauregard with his Department of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. They're about the most ready group I have. Army of Indiana's withdrawing. Isn't that the one that was over here? Near Little Rock. No, that's the Army of the Missouri. Where's the Army of Indiana? I don't know. There's so many of them, but we're, it looks like we're about to make contact with the 20th Corps. 22,000 strong. We'll have the numbers. So let's take Knoxville, and we'll probably end up in combat here. So we're taking Knoxville. It appears that Corps must have withdrawn because he's not there anymore. More importantly, I want to grab this telegraph station from the Union. I want to uh, secure the bridge. Funding policy three selected for the Union. All right, we've captured all that. Now I want to move up and grab these supply depots. We're only at 63% supply. How are we doing on pursuing his reserve corps? We're doing all right. We're getting that direction. He's headed toward Atlanta, of all places. All right. It looks like Beauregard got here and lost some of his readiness. Prussia attacks Denmark. The second Schleswig War erupts. The Danes deploying to defend. It will not go well for you for you at all. all right, it looks like the 11th Corps is going to actually come down and hit us in our low state of readiness. And that's fine. That's kind of what I'm after. Is a conflict here. Am I not able to fight it because of the state of readiness? That could be. Glorious victory at Fort Granger. So that's outside of Nashville. We do still have 47,000 men there under Hardy. Oh, it's the Army of Indiana is right here, but he doesn't have any corps. That's just an Army headquarters. Department of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida preparing siege. So there's a lot going on right now. All right. We're going to have ourselves a small battle here that could have major consequences because this is a Union force that's pretty deep in our own territory right now. So it's Gordon Granger versus Joe Wheeler. And uh, we've got a little bit of a man advantage. Let's hope that that works out for us. Okay, so it looks like we are fighting near Marietta, Georgia. This is the first time fighting on this battlefield, for me anyway. Uh, this, so this is Kennesaw Mountain. Marietta's where the National Cemetery is that most of the Union dead from the battles around Atlanta are buried. Uh, so it's, it's a small town, but a lot of history there. Looks like we're going to hold a lot of the objectives to start. Union could be anywhere, kind of in this central area. I'm thinking that 
or oh, Kennesaw Mountain would be a great place to deploy, but I don't know if he'll he'll go for that. I might split my force and go half and half here and then Kennesaw Mountain and then wherever he attacks me, maybe you know bring the other half of the force to that location. I definitely want to get some guns up there if I can. Kennesaw Mountain's a, a cool place to visit. I was there a couple years ago. You can see the city of Atlanta really well from Kennesaw Mountain. You can see Stone Mountain from there. It's a pretty cool uh, visit. So 3,000 men in Wharton's division, 3,600 in Martin's division. We've got 5,000 in Bagby in his division. So I think maybe what we'll do here is we'll throw Bagby down here with his division. We'll spread them out in a single line. And then we'll wait and see what the enemy does. So I sent Pegram's brigade out just to get a sense of what was happening. And I, I got just a little ways before noticing that he was coming this way. So I think we're going to go ahead and pull back. And probably dig in over here. Let's get these guns over here. Let's get these guys up against this fence. And then we'll bring... Bring the division from Kennesaw Mountain over in support. I need Pegram to drop the heck back as quickly as possible. Let's go ahead and mount these guys up. Get them going. Bring them over to help out. Before he managed to finally break free from his contact with the enemy, Pegram took 175 casualties and inflicted about 60 but now we have a much better look at the enemy forces. We were estimating 11,000, but now we know it's right around 8,500 is a more accurate number, and 15 guns. So now we can start getting our forces into place. I want to get this battery up here, maybe. A little better location. And then start building our force, our defensive position. We just got to hope we don't run out of ammo. It's kind of what happened last time. We had that little trouble with uh, taking a cavalry force up against an all-infantry force. And we saw the result was kind of mixed at best. Let's see what he does here. We've got the numbers, which means we should be able to envelop him. He's probably just got this one division, probably three brigades. He's moving really slowly, too. Time is it? It's almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so I don't know how much of this fight's going to happen on the first day. Okay, the guns are opening up. Well, those guns are on the right. These ones aren't. I might have to back them up a little bit. Six-pounder field guns. Six-pounder field guns. We need to upgrade our artillery all across the Confederate Army. just surprised how slowly he seems to be moving. These guns are still not operating. I'm going to try some counter battery fire. I don't know how effective six pounders can be in that regard, but it's at least worth an effort. If we could silence his guns early, that would be ideal. He hasn't taken any casualties yet. We'll, we'll let that run for maybe 20 minutes, half hour or so. See if we have any effect whatsoever. I just I can't find a good spot for these guns over here. Let's try back here. If nothing else, we could probably throw them up over here. Yeah, let's do that. Well, it is winter time, and so 5 o'clock in the afternoon is end of day at this time of year. Supplies not necessarily the best either. 
but it looks like 8 a.m. is when we're going to get started again. Let's go ahead and get this battery over here and then see what happens. Situation now looks like this. Not entirely sure whether or not he's going to act actively uh, attempt to attack me. We may have to be the aggressors here. Although the bar is inching in my direction because I have significantly more victory points than he does. That may force his hand. Which is kind of the point of the victory point system. I know not everybody likes it. I personally do because it forces things to happen. It forces one side or the other to act depending on the situation. Instead of both sides just sitting back and defending and waiting for the other one to attack. So I've started shelling his position. And he's responded by having his men lay down. Now it seems like they're standing back up. I think we're going to probably have to move on him. And that's fine. We're going to force him to stand up. I'm going to start inching forward with my flanks. We'll see how that goes. But if nothing else, it makes him stand up and face my artillery fire. And it might force him to do something. Yeah, here he comes. Okay. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Was to force something on his part. Morgan, just stay right there, man. All right. Looks like even Davidson's brigade is getting in on the action here. These guys haven't yet. They're not quite close enough. We've got mixed cavalry weapons here, which is not ideal because they don't have the range. Unfortunately, this kind of forces me to move everybody else up. Probably should have put them on the flank. This guy's going to get lit up. He's one, one brigade taking on four. How's that going so far? Good. We've already evened out the casualties. Good, good, good. Actually, if I get really lucky here, I could actually target his artillery. Because I've got three brigades dealing with the infantry. And they're going to withdraw now. You know what? Here's one of the benefits of having cavalry. How about we mount these guys up and we go in. Charge them, boys. I'm not going to charge with all of them. I'll charge with two brigades. 
Because just in case it doesn't go well, we want to have enough to still be able to do the job. Alright, we're going to mount them up and go try to deal with the artillery as well. Although it looks like I'm already hitting them. Ah, and the enemy's retreating. We broke them. Broke them in a hurry. Love it. We're going to pursue this, though. going to use that cavalry to our advantage. See if we can make this even more decisive. We've got an enemy in our deep in our territory, probably not well supplied, on foot facing a cavalry force. And we captured one of them. Beautiful. Get after the rest. Get after the rest. We got time. We destroyed his battery. We've got two more brigades of infantry here. We might not catch up to him in time. Hit him again, Russell. Darn it. I think these guys are getting away. That's okay. Major, major victory. Good stuff. Let's see what the final numbers look like. 713 casualties. 6,000 for the Yankees. Beautiful. Nice job, Joe Wheeler. So we've brought his national morale down to 64 now. Ours is sitting at 54. National support's pretty even. Morale of the armies is pretty even. Um, so I think things have stabilized a bit. Boy, there's such a long way to go in this war, though. But we're at least going to drive out that reserve corps or what's left of it. I'm going to keep the pressure up. I'm going to send, continue to send forests down that way. I'm curious to see where that other unit went because there was another army in this area. I may have just lost contact with them. Readiness is better with a couple of my corps in the Army of, the army of Northern Virginia, so we're going to send them to assist what's happening over here. See if we can't break this stalemate at the Battle of Goldsboro. Second Schleswig War intensifies the Danish pushback at the Königshügel. Interesting. All right, we've got movement by the Army of Northern Virginia. Actually, all corps are now in a slightly better state of readiness. Let's see what the situation is in East Tennessee. First Corps, I would like to see their readiness go up some more. Supplies at 91% now, though, and it was bad. It was uh, in the 60s. So we might be at a place now where we can advance here. I'd like to force a decisive action with the 20th Corps, where we've got the numbers. Glorious victory at Goldsboro, 11th Corps fleeing in panic. Wait, wait, what? This has to include the men that are already disabled, because it's saying our casualties are 28,000. But 29 killed, 1,700 missing, the rest wounded. So those are all those are men that were already wounded uh, that are just showing up on that casualty report. That's that huge amount of disabled that we have uh, in the Army of Northern Virginia, which right now is 40,000 disabled. But we're going to drive off the 11th Corps, hopefully. It's mid-February now. 450,000 men in the field for me, 739,000 for him. Those are probably accurate uh, in terms of the, uh, the discrepancy, the advantage in manpower that the Union is showing there. Narrow victory at Nashville. I don't know why we're not fighting these battles ourselves. It might be one of those situations where I need to drop out and come back into the campaign. All right, here we go, Battle of Cumberland Gap. This is going to be that expected clash in eastern Tennessee. And it looks like it's actually taking place right at the Cumberland Gap, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's that. The Cumberland Gap is 
a gap basically in the Appalachian Mountains that you could go through without having to go up and over the mountains. And it's down there right in that area where um, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina all kind of come together. What is with all of these demoralized notifications? That's really not the kind of thing you want to see when you're starting a battle. And you can see that it's already showing in his favor because we've got 6.3 points in routes and we haven't even started yet. All right. The rain's probably not helping. We do have 33,000 men. Where's he going to be? He's going to probably be close. We're going to try to keep everybody together. This is like a Chickamauga type of thing where um, it's all dense woods and there's just few passages here and there. I love the idea of being able to get up on top of this hill and fire at him coming down, but that's probably almost too high. I do want to get the guns up here in a position where they can be effective, though. All right, I put some skirmishers out there, and we can see that he's right where we expected him to be, coming toward the Cumberland Gap, where hopefully we can envelop him. We do have these two broken units that are already fleeing. Louisiana French Volunteers and Smith's Brigade. I'm not sure why that is. But I'm hoping he comes right down this road, and we can just come down on either side of him. I put my guns down here in the center in the Cumberland Gap. And I'm trying to start bringing the brigades around. Let's see if this works out the way I hope. Alright, we got one battery opening up. The others haven't yet. He's not quite in range for the... What are these here? 12 pounder howitzers. These are Napoleons. These are Napoleons. Alright, now he's starting to spread out a little bit. get these guns going. Now that we've made contact, we might have a better idea of his numbers. Yeah, 26,000 to my 33. Although some of mine are fled and are completely ineffective for me. Moving Withers out might have been too far because I think I may have caused him to stop. And I didn't really want him to do that. Maybe we can get these guns up here. Yeah, he's backing off now. This is uh, Benji's Bookkeepers and the New York Copperhead Brigade. Anderson's Brigade needs a elite flag. There it is. All right, he's backing off. Let's push forward. I'm going to try to be a little more aggressive here. See if we can start making contact. So he's sending some that way, but he's still got at least one brigade coming up the center here. Now they're moving. Long range, boys. Get firing on them right away. Oh, where are you going? Nope. Can't fire from there. Get on the other side of that crest.
He's got his flank sticking out on me here. There we go. All right, Benji's bookkeepers, let's do your thing. You and the New York Copperheads, you've got a real opportunity here to light this brigade up before things get too far. Oh, yeah, look at that fire. Oh, <laughs> we need this brigade opening up on them, too, for good measure. How are we doing with the guns? They're still moving. Slow going over that hill. Alright, he's sending reinforcements. He's got... A t oh man, that's a lot. That's a lot coming toward my left flank. A lot more than I think I'm probably comfortable with dealing with at one time. Let's pull them back. We've got to crush his right as quickly as possible. Looks like Phil Sheridan's division. My left could be in trouble. All right, so far so good on the numbers. He's lost 5% already. Problem is I had those two brigades that fell back at the start, and that's hurting overall situation for me. Oh, we got a whole division back here. I'm going to send the whole division around to the other side. So even if I do lose my left, I've got a new threat for him to deal with. Hayes is my main concern here. So obviously he's about to take some major ca casualties. What's the problem here? Winston's just taking a while. Sheffield being all the way out on the flank, it's going to take some time for those orders to get through. Here's where Hayes is going to start having an issue. Let's hope that we're overwhelming him in time. He's only got 20,000 men? Thought he had more than that. Guess not. Alright, Sheffield. I hope you get moving soon. Push forward. Hang on, Benji's bookkeepers. Hang on. I know you're taking a lot of hits. Oh, wow. Look at Stewart. He's about to break just because of the numbers. He's lost almost 50%. Stewart's brigade under Stovall. That's bad. That's real bad. Meanwhile, Anderson's brigade, an elite unit, has taken hardly any casualties. But, yeah, we're going to lose our center here in a second. Sheffield's starting to move around, but it's going to take too long. Stovall's going to break, and then we got to hope that Anderson hangs on. Okay, so here's good news. He saw my brigade or my division shifting, and it's causing him to rethink his own strategy. He's pulling back on the right. That's perfect. Stovall, how is he still hanging on? Usually at 50% they break. There he goes. But he lost well over 50% before he broke. Entirely sure why this is happening. It won't let me stop the order either. All right, we caused one of his to break in the center too, so it was kind of a 50-50 proposition there. But I definitely don't need this. All right, halt. 
do, just turn. You used to be able to issue a turn order and automatically stop that, which makes sense that you can't necessarily. Grinstead dead wounded, Hayes wounded. Oh boy. And now we got a real mess over on our right because things are not happening as they should. We just got a real jumbled, ugly mess. And that movement may cost me because because of that jumbled ugly mess. Ah, boy, what a bloody battle! He's already at 27% casualties. How's Hayes doing on the left? Ooh, he's approaching 50% too. New York Copperheads have their first perk level. I cannot get these guys to face the enemy. There we go. Something happened in trying to change our battle line and it just got messed up big time. Hayes has his perk, but he's about to break. We're going to give him Iron Discipline just to see if that will hang him on a little while longer. I doubt it will. Where's Withers going? There they go. Yeah, I expected that. Alright, we broke another one of his. Two more of his, actually. So thankfully we're strong enough on our right to counter what's happening everywhere else. But I haven't really handled this battle very well. Things were going alright until we tried to maneuver around. Withers, you get back behind the lines, please. He's pushing up toward these guns now. I may lose that battery. Now we're starting to get this mess straightened out. Where's the first brigade at on casualties? He's about to break. He's almost at 50%. Hayes is running over the hill. Let's charge him. I think we can finish him off. He'll break pretty easily, I would imagine. There he goes. The way everybody else is pulling back, I wonder if we might not get him to surrender. No, but he did break. minor victory. Hopefully we turn it into a major one pretty soon here. He is starting to come back at us. Oh, he did surrender. I was hoping that would happen. Yeah, Phil Sheridan, you are broken, sir. Now we just got to hang on on the left while we finish this. He's at almost 50% casualties now. How's this brigade doing? Not not nearly as high on the casualties. Once again, we're trying to straight out, straighten out our jumbled mess. Copperhead Brigade's good. Anderson Brigade's real good. Oh, we're getting into some more melee combat here, and it looks like he broke he broke one of mine, but I broke one of his, and that should be enough to win the battle. I think he's out. Yep. All right. There's another victory in Tennessee where we're stringing them together. Let's see what the situation is at the at the end of that battle. Okay, we lost 7,000 men, which is a, a pretty substantial amount, but we did inflict 12,000 casualties. On Alexander McCook, he's a fellow Northeast Ohioan. Uh, his hometown is Carrollton, Ohio, which is actually less than an hour from my house. 
Battle of Cumberland Gap, major Confederate victory. We've strung those together, but that's hardly enough. We need to take Richmond back. But I'm going to wrap it up right there. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Please hit that like button if you have not already. And we'll see you again in a couple of days with another episode. Thanks for watching.